How to deal with enemy missiles. Hi friends, I'm of course TTB. Welcome back to another MechWarrior online guide video. And today we're going to talk about how to deal with those pesky LRMs from the enemy team. We're gonna look at the, I wanna say, mech lab side, things that you can influence before you get into a match. And then on the drop side, when you're in a match, how to deal with enemy LRM mechs and all those missiles flying towards you and raining on your poor little mech, destroying your nicely put down paint jobs. You don't want that, right? So let's talk about the mech lab side first. If you're looking to navigate this video, there will be uh, timestamps down below in the timeline so you can easily navigate left and right. I've also got Twitch chat in here. If people don't behave, we'll just run out and hit them with the hammer. Uh, and other than that, let's get started with it. So, on the mech lab side, what can you do against missiles? Well, the first thing that pops to mind is, of course, the skill tree. Um, for any mechs, you can get into the census tree and you can go into radar deprivation right here. There are five nodes, three here, one here, and one here. Each of them gives you 20% quicker time to vanish from the enemy radar, i.e. less time for the enemy to keep you locked and shoot missiles at you. So those nodes can be really beneficial to you if you don't want to get alarmed to hell. Enhanced ECM 1 and 2, of course. Also, uh, if your mech has ECM, that will increase the range of your ECM by 50% or the target range reduction by 50%, which will also help to keep you off the radar and uh, get a shot less. Then, if your mech has AMS, there are a couple of things that you need to look at. AMS Overload 1 and 2 are highly important nodes for any mech that runs AMS. These will increase the damage that your AMS systems are doing, and that allows them to shoot down more missiles over time. The other nodes that we need to look at are the range nodes and the velocity nodes, because both of them also affect how uh, far your AMS can shoot and how quickly your AMS rounds hit the enemy missiles. If you go to the loadout here of this uh, Corsair 7A, for example, if you go over to the AMS, you can see the damage is 105 per second, plus 45 per second, so we increased our damage by almost 50% on those missiles, because each missile has a singular health value, depending on the size of the missile launcher and the kind of missile that's getting launched. Uh, ATMs, LRMs, uh, streaks and whatnot, they all have their own little health numbers, depending on the type of the missile and also the size of the launcher. Uh, max range, as you can see, is 275 for this AMS, but because we have range nodes, we're buffing that to about 340, and the optimal range gets buffed from 190 to about 240 with our skill tree. And as you can see, projectile speed also goes up by 15%, which is exactly the five velocity nodes that we've skilled. Okay, we've talked about that. Then uh, let's also talk about your mech in general. Generally speaking, if your mech is smaller, if your mech is faster, it's going to be harder to hit with missiles. Um, and it's also going to be a lot easier to get into cover, right? If you have a little locust or whatnot with 160 kph running around or a flea, you're going to get into cover a lot faster than, for example, if you run, let's say, an assault mech at 48 kph out in the open with no ECM and no teammates around, right? So that is something that also is worth considering. Then, another important point that we need to talk about is, of course, as always, ECM. Uh, we've talked about this in the skill tree guides as well, as well as in the beginner mech guides. ECM helps to keep your mech safe. Uh, it makes it uh, harder to target your mech outside of any kind of given radius, because um, ECM keeps you from being targeted. Unless the enemy target gets close to you, hits you with a tag laser, hits you with a PPC, things like that, right? or has a big active probe that can also help them detect you at, at a little bit longer ranges. But generally speaking, ECM keeps you safe, keeps your teammates safe. Okay, stealth, of course, stealth armor is another thing that you could use if you don't want to get learned. That is a thing that you can do in the mech lab. So for example, let's say you are piloting a, what's a good stealth mech? Um, classic Locust Pirate's Bane, right? Jump into the loadout, you've got Guardian ECM in there, you've got stealth armor over here. Um, that will make it so that enemies cannot target you unless they once again, hit you with a PPC or get a tag laser on you. They won't be able to target you with a big active probe because stealth just cancels that out. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room and the focus of the remainder of the mech build side, of the mech lab side, which is going to be the AMS weapon system, the anti-missile system. There are two available. There is normal AMS that uses ammo and there is a laser AMS that doesn't use ammo. Let's jump on back to our poster boy of AMS, the Corsair 7A, the best AMS mech in the game. 
Now, an AMS system landed in a sphere is going to set you back 0.5 tons per AMS system, and uh, you will have the ability to also run a laser AMS. Laser AMS on the clan side is 1 ton, on the inner sphere side it's 1.5 tons. They basically work like the normal AMS, but they don't use ammo. Instead, they're generating heat. So if you have a very heat intensive build on your mech with lots of lasers, laser AMS, if you have a lot of them, um, can be a problem because it's going to heat up your mech. When one laser AMS is not going to do much, but if you have like two laser AMS, three laser AMS, or four laser AMS, you got to make sure that your basic weapon loadout on your mech does not compound the issue. Um, so if the enemy team is shooting a lot of AM missiles at you, be careful, laser AMS can take you to overheat uh, and or meltdown. But you can always just shut it off. Yeah, just use the cursor keys to scroll down to your AMS system in, when you're in the game and press control to shut it off, the uh, right control button next to your cursor keys. Okay, now we've talked about different types of AMS. As I said, normal AMS needs ammo. You can have them in one ton or half ton varieties or laser AMS. I would generally recommend to bring at least one ton of ammo for AMS. In this uh, Corsair 7A with quad AMS, we've got one, two, three, four, five and a half tons of ammo for the AMS, which is quite a lot, but trust me, we've gone through that a couple of times. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about the best AMS max period. What are the best AMS max period? The best AMS mechs are the ones that allow you to bring the most amount of AMS into the game. That's the definition. The most amount of AMS possible in the drop. And that gives us a couple of choices. I'm not going to mention the one AMS mechs because there are so many of them. I'm also not going to mention too much about the double AMS mechs. I'm going to focus on triple AMS and quadruple AMS. Let's start with quadruple AMS. Let's start with the best first. The Iron Dome. Corsair 7A. You can do lots of builds on that thing. I've showcased lots of builds on the channel. I'm just going to give you a quick one. Um, if I feel extremely crazy, I might actually post all the build codes to those mechs into the uh, YouTube video comments. It's going to be the first one. Stick it down below. So, Corsair 7A. In my opinion, must have mech for everybody. Just get it for C builds or when it's on sale. It's just such a good mech. Quadruple AMS. And in this case, this is a sniper loadout. Two light Gauss rifles, two EAPPCs. 40 damage pinpoint alpha strike at a range of about a thousand meters plus lots of AMS ammo and lots of light gauss ammo shoots forever and keeps your teammates at range safe from any kind of LRM shenanigans super solid mech super fun mech to play and in my opinion the best AMS mech in the game now there is one other mech that allows you to run quadruple AMS and that is a piranha I'm gonna mention that mech, but I don't think it's very good. And here is why. The Piranha is a 20 tonner. And with 20 tons, you can only do so much, right? This is the Piranha Alpha. That one can run quadruple AMS, as you can see right here. Quad AMS on the back. And if you look at the mech itself, you can either run AMS with ammo, but then you have no tonnage for weapons whatsoever, or you can run laser AMS, which I think is the best option here because laser AMS sets you back one ton instead of 1.5 on the Indian Sphere side, because this is a clan mech. So you're spending four tons for AMS, and then you gotta think about what do you add. You can either add, in my opinion, three medium lasers ER or three heavy mediums. I went with three heavy mediums right here, XL170 engine, and a couple of heat sinks to fill it up. Head armor completely shaved and uh, leg armor shaved a tiny bit plus arm armor shaved a tiny bit. This mech is solid for providing AMS for your teammates. And because it's a piranha at almost 140 kph, you can get to your teammates quite quickly. The problem is, um, unless your teammates are pushing into the enemy and actively engaging, you're not going to get many shots off because with the heavy mediums, your range is 270 meters or whatnot, maybe get it up to 300 with the uh, skill tree, but um, it's not going to be able to do that crazy much, right? So, honorable mention for this Piranha, I don't think it's super effective, but if you want to have a light mech with quad AMS, this is the only mech you can select. Um, and it does its job good as an AMS bot, but it just doesn't do much above that. So, keep that in mind. Now let's talk about the triple AMS mechs, and there are two in the game, and uh, they are both really, really, really good. Let's talk about the light mechs first. You guys know which mech I'm going to select now. If you've watched the channel for a little bit, you know it. It is, of course, the Kit Fox Purifier 
with the arm loaned from the Kid Fox Charlie. So you can build this mech if you just get the Kid Fox Charlie right arm. Um, but you kind of need the purifier torsos to get those nice high mounts that you can't get access to otherwise. Although with the new mech pack that will give you access to some of the high mounts hopefully as well. But yeah, if it flies, it dies. The Kid Fox purifier with the Charlie arm is just such an amazing mech. Here's what you get. You got ECM for your teammates. You got triple AMS for your teammates. On top of that, in this case, we are using triple laser AMS. On top of that, we're adding five ear medium lasers and a lot of cooling. This mech is beautiful. It is the emotional support kit fox. That's what the chat has dubbed it, and uh, we just love it. 98 kph of speed. It's got jump jets in there. You got ECM to keep yourself and your teammates safe. You got ear medium lasers to be able to shoot targets at ranges of 450 and up to like 900 meters, even be able to do a little bit of chip damage. And the triple laser AMS is going to shoot down a lot of missiles for your team. Really nice. If it gets too hot, just switch off the laser AMS for a second or use a cool shot. And the other triple AMS mech in the game is a Nova, but you have to, need to do some modifications. You need to take the Nova S. Because that Nova S has a center torso that allows you to put an AMS slot in there. Then you take the alpha left torso and right torso also add AMS and then you've got a triple AMS Nova now what kind of weapons do you use well um, if you're just using normal AMS with ammo and whatnot or if you use laser AMS it really doesn't make a difference um, you've got two options you can go ear mediums or you can go the knife fighting Nova style which I really enjoy 12 ER small lasers make sure to not alpha strike this thing ever you shoot the right arm and then the left arm or the other way around, but never alpha strike or you just kill yourself instantly. This mech pumps out 60 damage per alpha at a range of about 250 meters. So it's really nice to stick with your teammates, provide ECM for the adult ECM, provide the umbrella of AMS for them. And once you get a little bit closer to targets, you use your jump jets, you use your lasers and you just cut into the enemy. This thing is a brutal mech. Never underestimate a Nova with 12 years more lasers. It will destroy you. DPS is insane. So yeah, this is also a really, really nice build that you can do. And then you can do other builds with double AMS. There are a couple of mechs that I will quickly mention. Not going to go into too much detail right here. Uh, for the medium mechs on the Inner Sphere side, for example, and also a good beginner mech, I would say, fun beginner mech, is the Crab 27. Right here, Crab 27, five medium pulse lasers and double AMS. Really, really nice build with a setup 275 engine. Fun to play, got some nice team help uh, potential, and uh, the medium pulses are fun as well. Then, on the heavy side of things, let's give you guys a couple of honorable mentions as well. There is a Black Knight that can run double AMS, if I can find it. Here, the Black Knight 6 KNT. That thing can run double AMS. Uh, in this case, we've run it with uh, three large pulses and five small lasers plus double AMS. Not a bad mech. And of course, there is the Catapult Jester in our Halloween Beholder paint job. I love it. Double AMS on top, four large lasers, two ER mediums, and a XL300 engine plus some jump jets. Really, really cool mech to run, and the double AMS helps out the team as well. And there's also a Thunderbolt that runs double AMS. I don't know if I'm going to find it immediately, but we'll, we'll, we'll scroll down. We'll scroll and scroll, and we will find it at... Where is it hiding? It is the bu 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 9S, a Thunderbolt 9S can also run a double AMS. And then maybe, like you got ballistics, missiles and whatnot, you could, you could run it, for example, with, um, let's say, two MRM-30s and some lasers, right? That would be a classic build for that. But yeah, double AMS on the Thunderbolt 9S, also possible. And if you're thinking assault mechs, a couple come to mind, but I think... The classic and original Iron Dome is the Atlas K. Atlas K, double AMS, MRM-40 launcher, heavy Gauss rifle, four medium lasers. Excellent mech, super tanky, 85 damage alpha strike and double AMS also keeps you and your teammates safe. Doesn't come with ECM unfortunately, but it is a uh, very, very serious mech and definitely a serious threat on the battlefield. All right, we've covered the best AMS mechs. What do you do if you only have one AMS available because you want to play a specific mech? Well, if you can fit the AMS without sacrificing too much, do it. 
If not, hope your teammates brought AMS or ECM. If none are the case and you're on a long range map with no cover, rest in pepperoni. <laughs> that's, that's the simple truth of it. Sometimes you just get bad matches where the enemy team has lots of Lermers and your team has no counter, and then you go next, right? You try as much as you can, and then you go next. Okay. Let's switch on over to the drop side. Once you're in a drop, what can you do? Let me let me go on. Let me hop into um, what should we hop into? Let's hop into the uh, Nova. And let's take let's take an example map that gets played a lot, which is Canyon Network, right? Of course, your mechs need eyes. How else is the mech gonna see? All right, so here we are, Canyon Network. Let's get to a higher position. Let's talk about this map a little bit. Now, most of you have played this map ad nauseum, because it's one of the most played maps in the game, in my opinion, if not even the most played map. And let's just leave our mech here for a sec and go fly. You can do that in the testing grounds by pressing F5, by the way. So, we got a lot of high ground, we got a lot of low ground, and we got these trenches in between. So, what can you do in the game to not get learned? One point is positioning and map knowledge. You need to know the hotspots, like where, where do people like to go, where do people crowd together, um, where are cover positions where you cannot get learned. So for example, let's say, let's say you're finding yourself right here. You're trying to look for some enemies and whatnot. Let me actually jump into the mech and go there, so it's more realistic. So you're playing the match for whatever reason, you're finding yourself on the Delta IV ramp, and there might be some enemies over to the Charlie 5, Delta 5 sites, like this way. And you're happily jumping around and whatnot. And all of a sudden, warning! Incoming missile! Well, I, personally, especially if I get narked, will get my ass under a roof. Because roofs are really good at keeping missiles off your head. Other options to keep missiles off your head are going to be larger boulders or whatnot, like this boulder, for example. If you hide behind that, it's going to keep missiles off your head as well. Remember, guys, there are two different missile trajectories. One missile trajectory is a flat trajectory if you can see the target directly. And if you have clear line of sight. If you want to look into that in more detail, look into my missiles guide, guys. But yeah, So if you see a target directly, the missile trajectory is going to be very flat directly towards you. If there is some cover in between, the missile trajectory switches to like a higher trajectory. And that means that if you are in cover, if the enemy doesn't have line of sight on you, make sure that cover is high enough to actually block those missiles. Something that's just as high as your mech is not going to work because the missiles are going to arc over that. This one will definitely keep you safe. Alright. The Narc Beacon. Everybody's favorite. If you get that little symbol down in your corner, you've been narked. Two things you can do. One, hard cover. Always good. Get cover from the enemy Lurmus if you can. Number two, what you can do is get close to a teammate that has ECM. If you are narked, but you are in the ECM bubble of a teammate, then of course uh, that will cancel out the narc. But if you are an ECM mech and you get narked, then uh, you're still lit up. So you can get into a friendly ECM bubble and that will keep you safe, but uh, your own ECM is not going to keep you safe if you get narked. And of course, get close to your AT uh, AMS boats. I mean, that goes without saying, right? Now, what else can you do against... The Lurmers. Teamwork. Teamwork is very strong. Dropping with friends right now gives you a big advantage over your regular run-of-the-mill teammates. A, you can call out specific Lurm targets and then focus on annoying them and or killing them. Or uh, you can go ahead and uh, go wolf packing with mediums and lights at lone Lurmers at a thousand meters. That is a very satisfying thing you can do, especially against the Lurmers that like to sit in the back. Because if you guys know uh, what, what uh, I'm talking about, if you guys watch my videos, you know that Lurming is most effective at about 300 meters, 400 meters. Closer to the enemy, give them less time to react. Lurming at max range is bad. Also, uh, by the way, <laughs> one thing on how you can counter Lurms is just range. If you are outranging the enemy at over a thousand meters, the Lurms will just fly at you and just explode somewhere between like 100 meters or so in front of you. So you can outrange Lurms. Mechs that can really well outrange Lurms, for example, are like ear large laser dire whales, um, dire with ultraviolet with UAC 2s or AC 2s, um, any kind of like long range ear PPC mech. You can just outrange the Lurms and you can shoot them from outside their uh, engagement zone. So keep that in mind as well. 
Lerm max range is around 1000 meters. I see it a lot of times that people try to Lerm targets at 1500 meters and their Lerms just explode in, in midair, right? So don't fall into that trap. Then, psychology. Really important thing here. I'm gonna, a wise man once said, push their missile boats until they've learned their lesson. Yep, I just quoted my, uh, my old buddy Panzer Magier right here. Yazi had it right. One way to deal with Lerm boats is to just get into their faces, push them as hard as you can, because Lermers, Lermers like to sit back. They like to sit back, they like to not get shot, they like to Lerm in peace. You know what really pisses off a Lermer, what really scares a Lermer? Getting shot, especially if it's multiple guys coming for them. If you want to see a Lermer run like hell, pressure, pressure, pressure. The worst thing you can do is play passive against Lermers because you're going to get chipped down and chipped down and chipped down until there's nothing left. So, put on the pressure, guys. Lermers don't like to get pressured. Alright. Let's talk about battlefield counters to LRM. We've touched on these, but let's, let's sum it up real quick. AMS. AMS, by the way, important point. AMS creates a bubble around you, right? It's a, it's a bubble, like a, like a half um, sphere. Or actually, it's a, it's a full sphere around you because AMS will work through walls, work through the ground. So if I'm, let's say, for example, I'm standing here, right here. I'm standing right here, and missiles are coming in this way. The missiles will still get shot. AMS works through walls, through floors, through everything. It is basically a godlike aimbot that shoots through everything. So you've got a bubble around you, in this case 240 meters, that you carry with you. And that means that the most effective way to run an AMS mech is to be Acquired. at the front line. You don't want to be in the back or standing next to your assault mechs, if possible, you want to be in front of them, in cover somewhat. So, for example, let's say, for example, my teammates are pushing in from here, and they want to go for this awesome over there. I don't want to be back there with my teammates. I want to have my bubble further forward, so that I get the full exposure of that bubble to hit the enemy LRMs. So, let's say, for example, LRMs start over here. They hit the, the outer edge of my bubble, and then they have to go through my whole bubble before they can actually reach my teammates. As opposed to if I'm standing with my teammates, um, let's say I'm sitting on the same level as my teammates, then they only get half my bubble. Because only the front part of my bubble is going to be uh, the range that the missiles get intercepted in, right? Hope that makes sense. So, I want to be, ideally, if possible, don't get yourself killed because of it, but if possible, you want to be in between the enemy Lurmer and your teammates, and that also gets you in range. Get a couple of shots in, back into cover, da -da -da -da, this guy is still getting shot at, your weapons have recycled, and you do this again, la di da di da and the teammates just finished the kill right now. Or you can you can just go for another jump at some point later and finish the deed, right? So positioning, very important for that as well. So we talked about AMS as a battlefield counter to LRMs. Getting close to teammates with ECM. Getting close to teammates with AMS. Another battlefield counter to LRMs that works very well is to get close to the guy that's learning you. If you get below 180 meters, the damage drops off drastically for clan LRMs or drops to zero for inner sphere LRMs because they just can't hit you. Uh, LRMs have a 180 meter minimum range, so if you get below that minimum range, you are mostly fine. As I said, clan, the, clan LRMs are a little bit different. They do a little bit of damage in that uh, lower range. The closer you get to them, the less damage they will do to you. Then, what else can you do? Well. I'm gonna show, show you guys a couple of mechs as an example of what you can do against Lermers. If you wanna specifically destroy Lermers, and you don't wanna get in close and personal and brawl with them, if you wanna duke it out at range, what do you need? Well, you need a thing that's called PPFLD, Pinpoint Front Loaded Damage. Basically, the idea is to do as much damage as possible to the Lermer in as little a time frame as possible, and then get back to cover so they can't even shoot you back because they need time to lock you and then the missiles need travel time as well. And a great example of that would be something like, um, let's say this King Crab Kaiju here, for example. It's a right side picker, three ERPPCs, two light Gauss rifles, hits at a thousand meters, fast projectile speed. You get around the corner, look at, you look at your target, charge, shoot, and you're back in cover again. 
it goes very quick. The Lurmer has no chance. He had Arch Lasers, he had PPCs, ACs in groups, Light Gauss, PPC combinations, lots of things you can do. The idea is, even, even the laser one we built, something like this, um, this Hellbringer, for example, which I recommend as a beginner mech, by the way. This Hellbringer Rivago, for example, at 500 meters, you come around the corner, you give him a quick laser burn, and you're back in cover. That is a tactic that destroys enemy Lurmers, and they can't do anything against you because, in this case, you even have ECM, so it makes it even harder for them to lock onto you. And uh, by the time they have locked on, you're back in cover, and you're happy. No problem whatsoever. Another tactic that can work against Lurmers or snipers in general is if your team has fast movers with good pilots and some range, you can just do little needle pinpricks from angles they don't expect and just get, get them off their game, annoy them, so that's also something that can work. And uh, of course, do not forget about artillery strikes and airstrikes. Those can also help with uh, deal with Lurmers that are entrenched in some position that you want to dislodge them from. Now guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If I missed any tips, if you have specific tips that you want to share on how you deal with Lurmers that you found effective against uh, missile lords in general, put them in the comments below if this video has helped you, then uh, let me know as well. And hey guys, uh, if you want to be part of the content creation process, uh, if you want to be involved uh, in making these videos, for example, voting on new content that we're doing, hit the Channelship Member button. There are a couple of uh, different levels of channel memberships available, and uh, you'll be able to, for example, join in on a Discord and vote on new builds and new video guides that we're making on this game. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, then you know what to do. If you haven't done so yet, hit the thumbs up button for the algorithm. Share this video with your friends. If you've got new people coming in, if you've got friends coming in, you could benefit from it, share it with them. And of course, if you want to support me, well, there's lots of options available all in the video description below. As always, thank you for your time. Hope this helps. Have a great day.